Would you love to make this magic circle of X? Well, this is gonna be a really easy one. The best thing is you can make so many variations of it. So our magic circle are going to require three magical steps. The first one is preparing all the assets that we would need to make a circle. Second step will be of course assembling all those. Then the step three would be making particle effects for it. Let's just add a plane to our scene. So let's just switch to geometry node editor and we will create a new one here. Just click on this new icon. Now we don't need this group input to work with. Let's get rid of it. Let's add a curve circle to the scene. This will not be visible on our render view as it's just a curve. We have to convert it to a mesh. So we'll use curve to mesh node and it will require a curve profile so we can use a curve line for that profile connected to the profile and we get something like this i will zero out the z value because we don't want to use that what we want to use is the x value for now i will set it to 0.02 and on the end just copy this value and paste it right here press minus 0.02 just don't want it to be a flat we'll add another curve line use a joint geometry and connect them both together and instead on the x we'll copy this value on the y and delete the x value so we get something like this which is a crisscross as you can see example if we use the data from these and assign a texture on this it will look something like this so how to do it first of all we will need to store some data to use a store named attribute and just plug it after the curve line and here we'll change the name to x which is the x value then use a spline parameter and connect the factor to it same way we can get it for the y axis as well and change the name to y now we got the data what we have to do is use a set material node go to the shader editor create a new material right here we'll name it line then apply the line material as well here and let's switch to the shader editor but we don't want this right now let's just bring in our attribute node so we can just basically copy this x value with ctrl c and just paste it here now if we visualize it it will look something like this as you can see there's a gradient so if you want it to be on the other end as well we'll use a color ramp for that connect the color ramp what you can do is an add another pin make the last pin all the way black and keep the between one all the way white and you can see there is a gradient on the left and the right same we have to do or is for the y1 so let's duplicate the attribute and just copy the y value from here to this y also duplicate the color ram and connect the factor to it so we can see it connect to the surface now it has also the same gradient now it's time to join them together using a math node of course connect both of them and let's see the final result so if you look it from the far, it looks like a 3D object only. To finish it off, what we have to do is use a emission and a transparent PSDF. If you have a node wrangler enabled, what you can do is press Ctrl Shift, right click and drag from transparent to emission. You can connect them using a mix shader, which is a shortcut. And lastly, the added value will go to the factor. Nothing is visible as of yet. We have to change the settings of our material change blend mode to alpha blend the last thing that you have to do is change the emission color increase the strength if you would like to i'll keep it to something like five for the emission i go to the render settings and enable the bloom as well we want to be able to access it freely for that what you just have to do is select all this accept the set material press ctrl g and it will group them now we can take out the settings which we want to use so i will take this resolution and connect it to the group input because i want this setting outside i will show you later also i want the radius because to just scale in and scale out our circle if you would love to you can take the settings of color line as well now what we have to just do is right click and exit group now you get this single node here it's now more neat and clean the next step would be to make a pattern that is going to be really easy because blender provide us with a really useful node which is called star let's just use a joint geometry so we can look all of them together and if we play around with the star we can get really cool result for example if we change the twist value and after set both inner radius and outer radius to one so it becomes an amazing pattern get different kind of result just like this one right here 
it looks like more of the one which are in the magic circles you can increase the number of points to get more different results now what we have to do is we have to do the same system with the star as well just go inside our circle and copy the same paste it here and what we have to simply do is just connect our curve which is this one and then plug it back to change geometry but there might be some slight changes in this you might have to change around the settings a little bit for this one to get the proper crisscross now we can just set the same material for it as well just duplicate this and put it here and we get it again i would love to do is add another add node and use a noise texture as just right here connect it to the color so we can use any color ram like this one if you connect it like that or uncheck normalize now you can see these lines on the texture it will look really cool this will give it more detail and one more thing you can do is change it to 40 w value i'll type hashtag frame divided by 24 so that this noise will keep on moving now the final thing that we would love to do is also make a group out of this because this is all messy and here this time i would need the settings like point inner radius outer radius and twist now the last thing is going to be the most important assets which are the runes it is really easy but it's a little tricky so first of all what we have to do is so again we will take a curve circle let's see where our curve circle is yeah there it is what we have to do is we have to use a node called instance on point which is this one now for the instance we'll take grid and connect the mesh to the instances now we have grids reduce their size because they are too big so these are the cards which will have the runes on them so the first problem is that they are not aligning with the tangent or the normals of the curve circle and the second problem would be if we apply texture to one it will have the same texture on all but we have solution to both these problems the first solution is really easy take a node call normal connect to the rotation and you might be thinking this will resolve everything but apparently it will not this is a vector and the rotation is in EOLR it's not able to read the values properly to align it with the normals so we have to convert this vector value to the EOLR which is the rotation so we will use a node call align EOLR to vector and connect it between connect the normal to the vector because it is a vector value it will give us out the rotation value now you can see it's aligning perfectly now that we have done it let's also just group it out settings which are only required is for example the resolution the radius size x and y as well they will be useful as well now we have to apply a new material to it the line material will not work for it of course we we'll have to create a new one which will be called runes and apply the runes here now let's head to the material and delete this one you would need a material for creating these runes so i already have that kind of material which is a square texture having runes on it so make sure the symbols are placed out in a gap now the first thing that we have to do is store a data from our grid as you can see we have a uv map we have to store it store named attribute and connect the vector value to the value and set it as uv now we have to change it to vector as well because the reason being our uv map value is vector now we have to just go back to the shader editor and use a node called attribute and put the name which is uv we can just copy it from here and connect the vector to the vector it's placing it on every one of them so the trick to solve is we will need a node called object info this object info will help us give randomness so we'll add a vector math just right here we can actually directly connect it and it can give us some randomness to make it even better we'll use another add node and set it to scale so it can scale the randomness even more the more you increase the scale the more random it would become but the second problem here is texture is zoomed out a lot so we can solve it using multi wide node one is for no change in the values using the first value it will first of all start zooming on the x value same on both like for example 7 now it has zoomed a lot so you have to play around with the scale and the divide to get a perfect result for you because there are so many values in it as you might have seen i've got that snappy changing effect easily just duplicate our scale or change the operation to floor 
add another value add another vector method here or change all the value you will see that snappy result here so what you can do is just take another value right here connect it to it again and change it to hashtag frame divided by 24 and that should continuously change now to get the perfect and final result what use again emission first of all then get transparent i'm going to connect them using a mix now for the final result what you can do is connect the color to this right here use a node called map range and set it to vector now connect the color to the vector and this one to the color if we change around with the settings we might get some good result also we have to change the blend mode to alpha blend this time we have to keep the emission in the first one and the transparent bsdf in the second one if you would love to you can clean it up using a color ramp just put it right here you can make it more cleaned up like this if you would love to also they are receiving a wrong direction so we can use is mapping and we can just rotate them by 90 degree of course so that they face right direction now comes the really really easy and the most fun to watch part so using a rotate instances just run it here and it's going to show us a mark our instances have joined together into one geometry to fix that what you can do is remove the joint geometry replace the joint geometry with this geometry to instance now we want to rotate them in the random direction so we'll use a random value node and of course changing it to the vector and only the direction we want to work on is it is the z direction so let's just set it to one and minus one for now after that we'll use a vector math node we'll just use it on this value hashtag frame 12 by 24 and that should do for us you have to change it to multiply for it to work so that they go in the random direction now you can see they are going in the random direction if you change the seed you can get different result now you would love to make more duplicates of it so that you can get more results but instead of that we have a really neat trick so we'll use a note called scale instances and we can use the same random value to it in the scale just right here that we can change it to float connect it to the scale and then just increase the minimum value to make it look even better we can just make more duplicates connect them here and after we are done with that what we can do is just change the seed to get different result change around with the minimum value as well so that we can get more variations there are so many examples which looks really good this one is also cool and now we are done with our second step that was to assemble all our assets that we have made now is the part three where we have to create the particles from our magic circle of course to start with let's take a plane in our scene again go to the geometry nodes editor and create a new one let's just focus where it is right now now we don't need the input so let's just delete it so we can just drag and drop this magic circle to set it to relative so that it comes at the original position right after that what we want is the particles can be made using a distribute points on faces just like that and you can see some particles if we gotta move these particles we need to use the simulation zone that will give us so many options use a join geometry and join our points to this and connect the simulation to the output right here one thing that we want to add is a scene time so let's just connect the frame to the seed so the particle spawn at the random position for example if you play it now you can see them spawning at the random position we gotta make them move for that we'll use a set position so we'll use a store named attribute just put it right here set it to o which is going to be our offset and we'll change the value to vector and use unnamed attribute as well copy this to here and change it to vector as well so that we can connect it to the offset again duplicate this one and connect it back to the value so that it loops again and again so that we add a vector math node just like this and set the value to something in minus but you will face this kind of issue the particles are not actually moving the reason being is that we have to use a node called realize instances so we have to just put it between the object info and distribute point on faces and now if we play you can see the particles are moving 
now next thing i would want is they will keep on spawning so let's just delete them after a certain time as these particles have a very short time so let's use a delete geometry node and again we'll just duplicate these two nodes and again use them here let's just put it right here and use this as a float value and set it to h copy this to right here and connect it to the right here duplicate this again so that we can loop this value setting it to float now let's add a node called math so what will happen is here it will continuously add one value at every frame giving it a age of the frame exactly so at the 70th frame it will be at age of 70 to make it delete which are older than for example 20 you will use a compare and set it right here if we set that greater than the value for example 10 it will delete the geometry in the selection which is more older than 10 frames so as you can see they are deleting instantly next thing we would love to do is we'll use a noise texture of course for that and we need to use vector rotation connect it right here first we need to change it to Euler and connect the factor to the rotation right here and let's see what we get we will get some noise as you can see they are dancing and moving let's just uncheck normalize now we can make them a bit faster as well can randomize it even more so we'll use a random value node set it to vector of course and connect it to this it will go crazy at the start but if we bring down the values for example max it can go is 0 0.1 minimum it can go is minus 0 0.1 but it's still way too fast so we can use scale node we can reduce its effect increase it as per your liking also let's just reduce the z value of max so that they all goes down now the final part would be converting them into a spark use a instance on point you can use a icosphere for this that should be good and connect it to the instances let's just see how it would look with a material so i will set up a material for it and we'll need to create a new material called particles for now let's set it to emission we can make it better later and set it to particles now that we have these instances what we need to do is scale them so that it looks like spark for that we will use a node connecting to our scale which will be a vector math node and just set it to add let's just set a value for the y and z and we'll scale it on the x direction just like that but the problem right now is it's they are just facing uh, the x direction only they are not facing the direction which they are going towards so we can fix that also using a named attribute and using our previous value which is the o which is the offset now we can connect it to the rotation and we are getting the rotation, some rotation but that is not perfect because we have to align the vector value to the EULR using this node and make sure it's connected to the vector of course then you can see they are going towards the direction perfectly now they are working more sparky sparky uh, so let's talk about the scale we want the scale to be more randomized because all of them are of same scale so we can use a random value node just right here and connect it to the vector value right here but we only want it to be affecting the x value so we can use combine xyz connecting to the vector of course and then connecting the random value to x so it affects only the x one and if you change around the values like that you can see the result some will be smaller some will be larger of course how do we make them look more better so let's just make them a little bit thicker using the combine xyz value you can make thicker here we will head to the shader editor what we can do is make it more better using a noise texture now we can't see anything good because we have to use a color ramp right there so white won't do i will change this one to black so something like that so there will be noise on the sparks and now if we look at the sparks they will be more noisy than before and they are looking more realistic that wraps up the today's video you have this magic circle effect ready for yourself if you like this video and if you really did and enjoyed this tutorial please do make sure to subscribe and also like this video so i will see you guys in the next one Ta -ta.